Hey everyone, it's Beth. And as we head into the holiday season, there's this verse that I've been studying the last couple months that's been captivating my attention and I wanted to share with you. It comes out of the Beatitudes when Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 9, that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And I've always loved the idea that we get to be called children of God. If you've ever prayed with me, you know, I always pray that with the authority we have as co-heirs with Christ, like that is this unbelievable birthright we have. But with that birthright comes responsibility. As children of God, we need to act like we're in his family. And I, I can remember when my um, adopted son, Evan, he's 21 now, but when he was 15 years old, he woke up with a stomach ache and I told him like any good mom to go ahead and go on to school. And the school called me an hour later and said that he was doubled over in pain. And by the time I picked him up at school, I realized something was really wrong with him. And we drove immediately to the emergency department. We began to be assessed there and the doctor said, oh, he looks like his appendix is inflamed. We're gonna have um, surgery to remove that today. And they gave him some medicine to kind of help control the pain. And we were waiting in a cubicle and I was filling out some forms about you know, our insurance and our medical history. And then all of a sudden, Evan sat up in his bed and he started to yell really loud and it brought all the medical professionals to our little cubicle. And they were telling me really fast, his appendix have already ruptured and we're moving his gurney really quickly down the hall and we're running down there and they didn't care about my forms anymore. They were just asking me, what is his family history? And I started to yell to them. He, and I don't do very well with anesthesia and his paternal grandfather died of cancer and his paternal grandmother has a heart issue. And I was like going on and on. And then all of a sudden Evan yells from his gurney, mom, I'm adopted. And I realized that I was actually giving him my medical history. I had forgotten in that moment that he was adopted. I'm like, oh, you're kidding. I forgot. I don't know anything. He's adopted. Just be good with, be careful. And they took him into surgery. And in that moment, because his future was my future, because he's so grafted into my tree, I assigned my history to his history. And that that's this is how the family of God works. God is assigning his future as our future because we are his children of God and his history is our history. And so how is it that the, that God has made peace with people? When, we, when the world talks about making peace, right? We say things like, we're gonna agree to disagree. We're gonna meet halfway. We're gonna compromise. That's how we're gonna make peace. But when God made peace with us, when he reconciled himself to us, he didn't meet us halfway. We didn't agree to disagree. He didn't compromise with us. When God made peace with us, he went all the way to us in our broken state before we even knew how to come to him. So if we're gonna look like children in that family, we need to go all the way to him, which means when someone has a problem with us, you know, people in our life and people out of our life, when they have a problem with us, we have two choices. We can judge them right away to make sure we draw a thick line between who they are and who we are. Or we can use their comments, their, their judgment of us as an as a opportunity to have a window of insight into where, who they are and what they're thinking and where they might be hurting, and we can use it to minister to them. This, this, there, when I was starting to think about this idea of peacemaking, I began to make an inventory, a list of people that when I thought of them, I had a little cringe inside. You know what I'm talking about when I say that? Like, like maybe we're not at outward and like overt conflict, but I know that something happened along the line in our relationship and I chose or they chose or together we chose to put some space or distance between us. And I decided if I'm gonna look like God's family, I need to not be comfortable with that distance. I need to do make sure that I have done everything that I can to go all the way with them. And what stops me from doing that is really a form of self-preservation. But once I decide to initiate, then there's some spiritual momentum that happens. Then God takes over because he gives me everything I need. And I started to make a list and, and take some initiation in relationships that would have been far more comfortable for me to leave how it was that they were. And it was reminding me, um, in Mexico, we built this ropes course at one of the children's homes. And one of the elements of the ropes of this ropes course was this element called the big V. It's basically two wires. They're about a foot or two off the ground and they start connected to each other and they go at their end, they're, you know, like nine feet apart. And the, and the challenge is you and a partner are supposed to stand up on the wires and touch nothing else but each other, your shoulders or your hands. And then you're to walk all the way to the end of those wires as far as you can go. And the first time I was facilitating that, I was watching the, um, this adult men's business group that was visiting in Mexico stand up on the wires. And these are, you know, 
almost six feet tall men or over six feet tall men and they were holding on to each other's hands and they were getting halfway down the wires and they were falling off. They weren't able to get all the way to the end. And the man who designed the element came over to where I was and said, do you wanna know the secret? And I'm like, I'd love to know the secret. He said, tell them to stop putting themselves in postures of self-preservation. They're bending at the waist, preserving their own equilibrium so that if the other person decides to fall or wobble or get off, they won't actually get hurt. But if they spent all their energy trying to keep the other person up on the wire, and that person spent all their energy trying to keep their other person up on the wire, and they leaned into each other, they're gonna make it all the way to the end. So as I gave that new instruction to our team, we watched partnership after partnership get all the way until they were nine feet stretched across the ends of the wires, both of them in positions and postures that were not about self-preservation, but were about the benefit of the person they were with. And I was saying to them, man, how many times in relationships do we not experience all that we can, that we just make sure that we're taking care of ourselves first and we do it at the expense of of what we might experience with the other person, whether you're talking about parent-child relationships or sibling relationships or work relationships or marriage relationships. There are so many times when we stop on that wire to make sure that I won't let you have the, the opportunity to hurt me. I'm gonna stay in this place. We're gonna get stuck at this place. And when I think about being peacemakers, I think, oh my gosh, Jesus went all the way. He went all the way until he was in a posture where he was not preserving himself. Instead, he laid his life down for, for all of us. And if we're gonna look this holiday season like we're part of his family, we're gonna lay ourselves out for our family and our friends and our coworkers and our neighbors and maybe people we don't even know yet. And I, I just, I am so captivated by that idea. Would you join me this holiday season in going all the way to the people that are in your life?